So like I said, again, I just want to thank you again for your time. I know you must be very busy. Um, but just before we get into the questions today, I'm hoping that you will be able to provide me with um, an update to the current situation in Beirut, specifically in regards to the political and economic developments from recent days. Um, and with that, we can jump right into my first question. So my first question is, do you think it's possible for transparent and fair elections, um, or sorry, a fair investigation to take place in Lebanon with or without international support? It has been almost a month since the, uh, the nuclear explosion, I don't know what to call it, uh, the Chernobyl of Beirut, uh, the catastrophe, uh, and since then, till now, we don't see any seriousness in the investigation. And that's why the first day I asked for an international investigation with, uh, with international control. Uh, the problem in Le Lebanon that we do not trust the system. It's not that we don't trust the politicians. We don't trust those who were appointed by these politicians. We don't trust the whole corrupt junta. It's not only five, six sectarian leaders that we don't. Uh, you're back? Yes, we're back. <laughs> I'm very sorry, but you know, this is also uh, one of the tragic tragedies that we live. We don't have electricity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In a country where you have great highly educated people, we still don't have electricity in 2020. So back to the blast, uh, no, we do not trust anything that uh, this, uh, this junta is, is doing. Yeah, okay. So then what needs to be done to ensure um, fairness and transparency if there was an investigation um, to take place? Well, Macron is in the country right now. He's mm -hmm. trying to fix a new government, a government that will won't be different than the previous government for one simple reason. The problem is not the government. The problem is those who are um, acting and, and ruling through the facade that is called a government. It's the five, six, or seven leaders with their followers who are deciding everything and who are setting the agenda. And then they just find some pretty faces with uh, good CVs to appoint them as, as uh, ministers and prime ministers. So this is happening again, and it will keep on happening because this junta is really concerned on any accountability, because if anyone is going to ask them about the, the big failure that they turned this country into, they will, uh, or they will investigate the wrongdoings, the stealing, the... Um, uh, I mean, the, the failure that, that uh, this country is right now, they are really worried about that. So they want someone, you know, who will not hold them accountable, who will just focus on issues that are dictated by the uh, oligarchy dictatorship that we have. And uh, they will never go into, you know, uh, any forensic audit, for instance. Uh, they just do some lip service, um, some uh, propaganda, but we don't expect anything serious from them. Yeah, of course. So with the new um, appointment of the new prime minister yesterday and today, um, there seems to be like this, this vicious cycle of insufficient political change, um, which is of course what the protesters have been calling for in the past weeks and past months. Um, is there an opportunity right now for this new prime minister to break out of the political cycle? Um, do you see that happening? Well, if they wanted to, uh, uh, you know, let anyone work in this country, they would have gave it to uh, Hassan Diab, the, the previous and the, the caretaking government right now in Lebanon, because he was also their guy. They. Um, uh, they reached an agreement around his name. They chose him. They picked, you know, handpicked from the AUB just to say that he's not anti-American and, uh, you know, all the, the messages that they want to send to the 
international community and to the whole world. So they had a great candidate, great for them, you know, to look good, to let him work, to achieve something. Plus, they gave the uh, important portfolios, again, to the same political cast. Like, they gave the energy portfolio, again, to the, the current of the president, Michel Aoun, that has been, that has been for 12 years trying to bring electricity, for instance, with no avail, and it's getting worse and worse. Uh, they, they gave the, the most important uh, ministries, again, to the same lame political parties, and they did nothing. They promised a hundred year, pro hundred days uh, promise. There was nothing after a hundred days, but he had the, uh, the, the, I don't know what to call it, the, the courage, the, um, to go on air and tell people that 97% of what he promised was delivered. Mm -hmm. So uh, what, nothing was delivered. Uh, they just delivered hundreds of, of messages, of press conferences, of events, but nothing was really done. There was no action. And here again, uh, this prime minister will start also by telling us that he will work hard, that he will try to make things better, and that uh, he'll, do, he'll do everything possible to make this place uh, a country again. But uh, truly, I don't think he can do much because of the reasons that I told you. He's not a, he's not a decision maker. Even if you have the best CV uh, on earth today, the best resume, you need a decision maker, and this is what we don't have. The problem is the decision making is sometimes with a, in the hands of mercenaries who will only listen to external powers and do whatever they dictate to them. And also the nomination of this prime minister came in this way. I have a request from the international community, if you allow me. Yes, of course. I would love to hear uh, it. Yes, first I would like to thank them for the for the humanitarian aid and support that they provided for Lebanon and that was highly needed. However, there's another kind of humanitarian support that this country needs and that the Lebanese people are in dire need. And it's the support to delegitimize the mafia that's ruling this country. The Lebanese people delegitimize them already in the street. There were protest, protesters in Lebanon, demonstration everywhere, and people told them, we do not trust you, we need early elections, we need a government uh, formed from people who are not part of the political caste, who are uh, independent and who do not report to the mafia uh, that's, that's ruling the country. It was very clear that was the two most important demands for the people in the street. And until today, uh, they do not want to you know, meet this, this demand. So uh, the international community can now do something for Lebanon, besides trying to find a good name and just uh, try to get some uh, diplomatic win. Um, they can help us delegitimize them. Uh, I hope everyone who will come to this country will go and visit Feirouz, like Macron did, the, our famous icon. Uh, it's, she's, she's a great singer. She's a great Arabic, Lebanese uh, singer. And she represents our unity as people. Uh, I liked what Macron did. He went to see her first for anything else. And uh, he planted a cedar. So I said kind too, but then dealing with the, the mafia, um, that's, that's for me, um, that's not in the best interest of the Lebanese people. And on the contrary, they want to gain time until the U.S. elections, until they know if there will be four more years for Trump or if there's another president and how to reorganize politics around him. So... We're in the fridge right now, waiting for things to happen outside our borders. Meanwhile, it's failure after failure after failure, unfortunately. Wow. Yeah, that is um, it's super powerful. And I hope that the international community will be able to step up and come and deliver on some of these requests that you have given. Um, 
Yeah, so my, my next question is, I guess you, you, you talked on this a bit. Do you think that there is a political will for early elections? Uh, honestly, I don't see them, uh, you know, willing to to have new elections in Lebanon. They don't want the tests of the people. And they don't want to be, you know, uh, looked at as uh, not legitimate anymore. I think they have a serious problem when it comes to any elections, uh, even in syndicates, in orders, or in uh, parliamentary elections where people can go and, and uh, you know, and vote secretly against them. So I think they, they know that there, there will be a surprise this time. They know that there's a momentum and people are more and more um, awakened and more and more aware of what, what they did to us. Uh, I mean, this explosion was like a huge wake up call to, to Lebanese who still thinks that these people can do something different. So, um, no, I don't think they want to do elections. That's why I call on the international community to help us, to pressure them to do early elections. Uh, there's, like, if elections are in 2022, which is not uh, too far. Right. Um, but, um, but I'm telling you, last time, they stayed in power for nine years. They didn't do elections for nine years, and they didn't care. They think that people will forget. And every day in Lebanon, we have a different problem. We have a new crisis to manage. So, yes, sometimes we tend to forget what happened yesterday because we have something today to deal with, uh, a problem usually to deal with. So since every day there's blood somewhere, there's uh, people dying, we don't know why, just collateral damage all over the country. Yes, we tend to forget what happened and we tend to continue our lives despite everything. So I hope that the international community, uh, they don't forget usually. I hope, especially from the EU, to have a clear policy, just like Germany did with the denazification, like the US and its allies did with the debasification in Iraq. Now it's time to delegitimize the Lebanese mafia. Yeah, okay. Um... Moving back to the economic situation, so can you discuss some of the underlying causes of the public anger towards the current economic situation in Lebanon? I know it's, it's quite complex and it dates back, you know, prior to the blast, but I think the blast has exacerbated the economic situation. Actually, they found an opportunity in the blast to get more fresh dollars through the uh, international donors, through uh, you know, help that was provided very quickly for Lebanon, for relief, for NGOs. So they used these dollars to stabilize a little bit or to be able to stabilize the, uh, the known pack for the dollar in Lebanon. We live in a dollarized country mm -hmm. and we don't have dollars anymore. So, uh, Unfortunately, the blast was a kind of an oxygen for this mafia, for this junta, because money was pouring into Lebanon to help from the diaspora and from uh, all the generous people around the world who saw the pictures, uh, who watched what happened to Beirut and wanted to help the city. So, um, but I don't think this game can last a lot. Uh, Apparently, Macron has a plan, as I read yesterday, today and yesterday, and the plan is a kind of a shift in the economic, uh, in the economic way, strategy. I don't know if there's a strategy, but I mean, uh, they're they're setting new rules and new, uh, let's say, not regulations, a new way in dealing with the economic matters in Lebanon. Until now, it was. Uh, a, a policy of, it was a Ponzi. Uh, the governor was doing a Ponzi and, and everyone knew about it and it was a kind of a denial. And I was a journalist and I used to ask questions like, how can we sustain if we have to, every day to pay millions of dollars over the debt, over the uh, 
imports that we get. I mean, and there's no export in exchange and there is no uh, uh, balance in, in, in payments. I don't know if it's the right translation. How can we sustain it? And the question was, the answer was, oh, you don't understand the economy. This is maybe something that is uh, hard for you to get. And I would, at the end, it was the Ponzi was working and if you stop asking questions and you accept that you're an ignorant in economy and that things, yes, can go, go this way. Uh, so um, everyone gave up at the end that it worked for 30 years, so maybe it can work forever. And then what happened in, in, in October, the dollar started uh, going up. Uh, there was two markets and people took the street and told them enough is enough. I mean, it's about our security, our life, about everything. And it was for the first time also people from all wakes of life, from uh, different classes in Lebanon, from different parties, different religions, they were all in the street asking the mafia, the junta to leave. And the answer was the way you saw it. So it's ongoing until now. They want to blame sometimes the demonstrators that they were the cause through for this economic problem. But it's exactly the economy and the economic problems that brought people to take the street mm -hmm. and to defend their country, to defend its sovereignty, and to defend uh, our wealth. They spent on our tiny country more than 300 billion dollars for nothing i mean it's so obvious that they stole all the money because nothing was done right. nothing at all and there's nothing working in this country absolutely nothing we spent tens of billions of dollars on electricity and we don't have electricity mm -hmm. where did, where did this money go you will you won't get any answer and they keep on you know trying to find new projects to fill up their pockets and at the end the project that is, is supposed to be uh, a public interest for the people it ends up you know uh, more public debt more problem more uh, uh, environmental uh, uh, catastrophe and this is how we've been living with them for all these years wow they have one weapon they have one one weapon until now that is still unfortunately selling and it's sectarianism this mm -hmm. is their only way for survival, telling each one its constituency that he is sent by God Almighty to do what's the best for the sect. And all sects are living the same, the same uh, tragedy that, that we do. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's truly unbelievable. And seeing, I mean, the reaction of people, but yet that it has just continued for years and years and years is it's just incredible really and it's yeah wow um, surreal. it is uh, surreal so yeah so i hope i will give you you know just a little bit of, of uh, what's happening here yeah of course it's, it's, it's incredibly com complex yeah so I just have a couple final questions and correct me if I'm wrong, but today does mark the 100 year anniversary of Lebanon's independence. Is that correct? So independence, no, but a uh, hundred when uh, from the day Lebanon was proclaimed, you say, mm. as, uh, as a country, as a country. Yeah. It was called the, the big Lebanon at that time because Lebanon had different sizes throughout its history. So they added this part of the Beka Valley, part of the mm -hmm. south and north, and it became bigger than it was than the Mount Lebanon. And they called it the Big Lebanon. And it was announced 100 years. There were, we were under French mandate, mm -hmm. and the French stayed until the, the Second World War. Our independence uh, was. Uh, a fact after they left, after the French occupation then. We had different occupations after that. We didn't call it occupation. Sometimes we call it friendly presence. Sometimes we call it friendly occupation, friendly mandate. You call it whatever you want. Now it looks like we're living the, uh, the Iranian era in Lebanon. Mm -hmm. It's very clear that Iranians uh, won in the battlefield that is called my country, Lebanon. 
and the uh, and the struggle continues for our independence for our liberty yesterday the protesters outside the house of Feirouz, the lebanese singer and icon were telling macron we are free people and we want to be free and it touched me so much that someone is, is screaming what i want to say because i'm sure when he goes to see the the politicians, they will ask for personal interest. They will ask for things that are about their parties, uh, pretending it's not the party, it's the community and the sect, community slash sect slash, uh, you know, how the division is in Lebanon. Yeah. It's still the same politics, divide and conquer. They're doing it within the same Lebanese people who are supposed to be united. Yeah. Wow. And hearing from the people is just incredibly powerful. So I hope that um, the protesters... Can you repeat, please? Ah, yes. Hearing from the people is just, it's incredibly powerful. And I hope that they continue to speak up and that their voices are continually heard on an international stage. So yes. my that. final, um, final wrap-up is just to give you the opportunity to send um, any other message or um, question or concern to the international community, anything that we can do here in Brussels? Um, yeah. Well, let me tell you, we deserve the life that you have in Europe. We deserve to live in a country where you can plan for a future or plan for the tomorrow or plan for your wedding or plan to have a job. Uh, we deserve, after 100 years of struggle, of suffering, of tragedies, of blood and of lots of, of uh, misery, we deserve to have a country that is, uh, that can protect every Lebanese, to have law enforcement, and what, what we are asking here is our basic needs. We're asking, we're not asking like in Hong Kong, for instance, for, for freedom or for freedom of speech, or we're asking for our basic rights. We're asking for security. We're asking to be living together as Lebanese and to let us live as one nation. Um, I can understand that in the entire world now, the Dividers are winning, and that's also very sad. The right wing is, is taking over everywhere. The Trump effect is seen uh, everywhere in the world. So I have, I hope that Europe will stay a place of values, of empathy, and uh, and to keep these values and to fight for these values. Um, because as Lebanese, I was hoping that we can get this this fresh air from, from Europe, democracy, and then all the values that, uh, that also Europe paid a very high price to live in these standards. So, so my message is don't give up, because if you give up, we won't be able ever to, to have a place where, 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 where human dignity is respected and when, where we can have a future for our kids. Wow. Thank you so much. And I want to say, at least on my behalf, that we haven't given up and I'm very much invested in the cause of the Lebanese people. And um, I just hope that I can continue to do as much as I can personally to support Lebanon and the Lebanese people. I hope to see you in Beirut soon. I would love that. And thank you for everything you're doing for Lebanon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paula. I do really, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.